evening, fam, and a warm welcome to TBN Meets, where we celebrate the best that Africa and the world has to offer in enhancing the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ. I'm absolutely excited about our guest today. Dawn Faith McKay, she's an author, musician, speaker, social activist, and soon to be the host of her own TV show, influenced by her upbringing in Guamash, Kwazulu Natal, and a deep desire to make a difference. Dawn has dedicated much of her life to inspiring others to rise above their circumstances. She has helped start some of the world's largest civil society organizations, working with the likes of Nelson Mandela's 4664. And so after relocating to Australia in 2009, she expanded her pursuit of social justice, helping to empower disadvantaged youth and recent immigrants. As a musician, she has performed in some of the world's most revered venues, such as, wait for it, the Sydney Opera House, and alongside legends such as Yvonne Chaka Chaka. She's also been called on to share her story, which we'll be hearing about a bit later. Um, she's shared this as a motivational speaker and keynote speaker at conferences, churches, schools, including Oprah's Leadership Academy for Girls. Now, having just turned 35, Dawn has already achieved more than I think most of us could ever do in a lifetime. She has written and released her first book titled Dear God, and her next major project is a global talk show called Deep and Meaningful. She currently lives in Johannesburg with her Australian husband. Well done to you. Went to Australia, <laughs> found her husband, and his name is Nick, and their two-year-old son, Luanle. I like the name of your son, Luanle, because you went overseas, yeah, well. over the seas, Hallelujah. and then over <laughs> Luanle. I mean, like, is that how you got to name him? No, but that, that would be a nice story if if that was the case. It but sounds good, you know, because Luanjli means ocean and you went over the ocean and you got found a, a dad and I should have thought of that, but but <laughs> but no, no. Now that I think about it, I might add it in as a, a by explanation a of bi. his name. Yeah. yeah but no, I think it's absolutely beautiful. But welcome to you. Thank, Thank you so much you. For, for joining us on TBN, TBN Thank Meets. Thank you. It's awesome to be here. There's so many elements, there's so many elements to your career. So I want to just kind of start I want to talk about your music first. Yes. Um, where did that exactly come from? From my mom. Mm -hmm. I grew up, it, like I always think when, mostly for black people, I suppose, when they're asked about the history of the music, oh, I went to church and, you know, my mom was singing or whatever. For me, the, it's not a, a unique story either. My mom sings and mom grew up with the boy Uncle Mtunzi Namba. Yes, yes. And so when they were all younger, they were in a group uh, I forget what they were called, but they were in a gospel group that used to sing at churches, their assemblies of God, and that's how mm. you know they got their five minutes of fame. And so during these rehearsals, because we were all small, we all had to go to with, with the families. And so I spent about two days of every week sitting through my mother's rehearsals um, when she was, yeah. And so I naturally learned their songs and they would get us to then sing on stage with them. And typical Saturday, um, I remember always, like, either I'm hearing um, oh, Donny Hathaway on a Saturday morning, mum's yeah. woken up early and she's playing the, the vinyls and cleaning, you can, what was it, potpourri. You can smell the potpourri <laughs> from Freyfing. Is it called yeah. Freyfing? I don't know what it's called in English. From Freyfing, the floor. <laughs> and there's, uh, yeah, there's music. So it's just always been something that um, was a second language in my home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, the first time that I met you, I think it was about when, like 15 years ago, yeah, 15, not 20 a bit years more. ago. Yeah. And, and at the time, you were a music manager. Yes. Um, I didn't even know that actually Dawn could sing. Yeah. You know, but yeah. I should have actually. I mean, you're from, you're from KZN. Hey. Everybody in KZN hey. can sing. Hey. <laughs> okay, what can we do? Yeah. And so since then till now, 15 years later, uh, when did the change sort of occur from, from manager to artist? Okay, I have a very, a very sad story about my singing. I, like I've always sung, but I didn't know that I was good enough. Wow. Like that, that I had my own unique voice. And the thing that, you know, the, the thing that concerns me a lot now when I'm parenting my son and being clear about the things I, I communicate indirectly to him, because that's for me was the case. My stepdad used to work for engine driving delivering petrol and so he when he used to work night shift he'll be home in the morning mm -hmm. and in the morning as an, as i'm getting into the shower like every other girl i used to sing in the shower and my mm. mom would say we are rasa like your dad is trying to sleep what's wrong with you and for me i always mistook that for i'm not good enough and so oh, i'm making wow. a bunch of noise yeah. and so despite the fact that I, oh and i wanted to go to university to study music which my mom was like i'm not sending a child mm -hmm. to university to study music you can be a lawyer or anything else but not a musician so all of those things for me at the time of being a teenager read as 
I you must not, sing. you know, but because I still loved music so much and I wanted to be involved in it and I naturally could brand people and have vision for what they could do or ideas of how we could approach labels or things like that. So that became my natural go to that. Well, if I couldn't sing, surely I could still use these things that were bubbling up in me to help empower and get other people to have mm, their visions mm. come through. And it wasn't until five, six years ago when I had a massive meltdown and I was crying, I don't know what I'm supposed to do with my life. And my husband said to me, what's the one thing you really want to do? And I was so ashamed and so embarrassed to even then confess it out loud because it seemed so stupid. But I said, actually, I want to sing. And my darling was like, so why not? Like, like do it then, mm. you know, and then you're not doing it for how many CDs sell, but you're doing it because it's what you love. But that's, and that's do. the reason that I think everybody should sing. Yeah. You know, um, yeah. even those who are, who are musicians and they've got albums that yeah. are out, you know, yeah. up until the moment that you lose that thing that says you I'm doing this because I want love to, to sing do this. for myself, yes. you know, yeah. um, the moment that you, sh you should probably stop singing. That's so it. I think, yeah. you know, as much as, you were probably scared before, but I guess yeah. you've kind of found the real reason. I have, yeah. Well, and, and, and it's now just singing and singing what I want to sing, mm -hmm. singing how mm -hmm. I want to sing it. I'm not thinking about the air and art or any, any of those elements to the music. And in the end, I'm just like, well, God, if surely there'd be at least one person next to my husband and my mom and my sister who want to buy the, the it's music. So they tell them an idol. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? At least like there'll be like five CD sales. Woohoo! Yeah. You know, my stuff is out there and I'm true to myself. And and I've heard some of your stuff, you mm. know. Um, it's definitely, you know, it, it's, it's definitely word conscious. Yes. You know, in other words, I don't think there's anything that you're saying that is outside of the word. Yes. Which is great, you know, yes. because sometimes we always feel like Gospel music has to have these certain lines and these certain and phrases. And this sound, yeah. Um, and since you started, because you were in Australia at the time, right? Yeah. When you yeah. started, it must have been kind of hard for you to um, to 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 sing music that is not conventionally gospel music yes. and for it to be accepted. I yes. mean, how was that time for you and to try and get this message yeah. of you know like of love of acceptance through your music and and yet like it's not conventional. I, I think it was extremely challenging, as most things are, and, and you're absolutely right. It, it's when you reach a point in yourself that you know in you what you want to say is good enough, how you want to say it is good enough, that then those barriers don't matter anymore. And I think at the time I'd already been so influenced. So coming from South Africa, I'd listened to so much gospel and to so much local version mm, of gospel, mm. and then I was immersed in... Um, a Caucasian church, which is highly influenced by the Hillsong music. So then even then my own sound and how I want it to um, translate that was very different. And I think um, what continues to be the principle of my life now is does it feel good to me? And does it feel like it's what God wants me to do? And then trusting that however it shows up, someone else will, will relate mm. to it. So yeah, so I think it had, it, the bottom line was it, I had to stop not caring, but I had to stop being consumed by how things will be perceived and how things will be received and know that in that space, I'm good enough mm. for me mm. and I'm good enough for God. And therefore my music and what I bring to the world and my offering into the world is, is, is good enough and it may not be for everyone, but I know, I know as sun will come out that it'll be good enough yeah, for someone, yeah, do you know, and, yeah. that, and that, that's, that's, and that's good, good enough. that's good, Dawn, you know, because the thing is you should never lose that, you know? Mm. You are so unconventional. I think for yeah. as long as we've been friends, I'm <laughs> like, how, she does it so differently, but yet it works, yeah. you know? I'm weird, but the good weird. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the good but, kind of weird, yeah. But it inspires yeah. us because, you know, because sometimes when the Holy Spirit speaks to us to do something, yeah. he, he's very unconventional, yeah. you know what I mean? Well, and, Jesus and, and was we very say, unconventional. Yeah, and then we want to say, no, not like that. Yeah. We want to do it like this. This is how it's done. You know? Yeah. Um, yeah. So, and, and, and you've dedicated your life to social activism. Yes. Um, I've seen that phrase sort of spring up whenever the name, you know, Dawn Faith would come up. Yeah. But you explain to us. Yeah. What is social activism? Social activism is, is being a person who cares about living in the world beyond themselves. Mm-hmm. That, that you recognize um, that it's not enough that your world is great. It's not enough that the world and the church is great, but that like Christ, the biggest commandment he's given us is to go out mm. into the world. And so it's, 
it's, it's the going out. And the going out might not always be going out with the Bible. It's just the going out and be present. It's the going out and opening your eyes and seeing what's happening in our world and what can you actively do. It's not the press, it's not exclusively the liking a comment or, or, or do, it's, it's actively doing something. So that's the activism comes from action. It's actively mm, engaging mm. with our society and looking at what are the challenges the world is facing and what can you do about those things. And those actions vary from, you know, volunteering your time to engaging your brain about the higher and the bigger challenges about the democratic space in the world at large um, to then, yes, sometimes um, social activism in then bringing the word of God into the space because we know mm. that that brings the light into the space. Yeah, so that's what, that's what I do. And I think for me, it wasn't like a, a conscious choice in the, oh, I want to be a social activist because that wasn't in the list in high school when they said, what do you want to be when no, you, you grow up? That. It's having a sense of responsibility towards the humanity and the world. I know? know that a lot of people out there, they're like, you know, there's so much that I want to do for my community. Mm. Um, I mean, you, you've done this thing for the world, mm. um, you know, knowing the work that you and Nick have been doing. Yeah. Just wherever you guys have been. Yeah. And, um, and a lot of people are saying, yeah, but there's this and this lacking in my life that like if I would just get this opportunity, I'll be able to do this. Yeah. But I know that when you guys had nothing, you were able to do this. Yeah. You know, um, I rem uh, what are some of those projects, you know, apart from the one you did for 4064, yeah. but there was one specific one that we worked. That yes, we worked on. Key Change Music. Key Change, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know what, like the one, like we, we constantly, my husband and I are constantly challenged about the idea of not doing until you, ha until, I, I won't do this until. And I okay. think that that goes against the word of God. God constantly is asking us to step out in faith. That's the, that's the. So where do you find the strength? I mean, like it's what actually I would really want to yeah, talk no. Where do you guys find the strength and just the inspiration to do such things? It's, it's, it's the crazy, stupid faith. It's the, it's the, it's the, I feel strongly and passionately about this. Yeah. That that not do like I always feel like not doing the stuff that I do makes me more sick than than the than being intoxicated by the fear of it failing I don't know mm, if that makes sense mm, like mm. I, I I I when yeah when I'm not doing it's like I'm not breathing when I'm not doing what God is meant for me to do with my life because I'm not in alignment with purpose then I just as well shouldn't be existing so then it's always easier there's not a better word than easier, yeah. but it's always an easier. I rather than just step out in faith and know that I've done it because it, it, because I know that's what God has asked for, of me. Like it, some people w don't know what their purpose is and, and don't know what their dreams are. And they spend most of the time trying to figure out what am I supposed to do with my life? We have the greatest blessing and sometimes the burden of knowing exactly what our purpose and mm, what our calling mm, mm. in life is. How do you then not live in line with that, trusting mm, that it's mm. the purpose is not about you. It's about the thing that God wants to fulfill through you. And so I take off the burden of thinking that I have to provide for it. Yeah. Like nah, yeah. like not my dreams, yeah. not not my not my vision, not my purpose. God, mm. you want me to do this. So hello, mm -hmm. I, I gotta I gotta start this not for profit organization and go and do this campaign in rural KwaZulu Natal. I gotta go to Australia and do this. You best make sure I've got a flight ticket to get on the plane to yeah. use this. Because you know my bank balance and you mm -hmm. are the one who deposited these seeds and these desires in me. So mm -hmm. it, it is predominantly crazy, stupid faith, just trusting that if God has placed something in your heart, he, he will then provide for it. All he asks of you is that activism, is that action that you then would get up and show us daylight every time, Luiso. And He's you know provided. what? And 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 some of the times, I mean, just to kind of add on to what you're saying right mm. now. Um, just having looked at you guys, and you know, on how you guys sort of lead your lives, mm. um, you and Nick, and hopefully Luandle too. <laughs> the ocean <laughs> is the fact that it's not even about the big vision, but it's a matter mm. of what is it that I've got to do today. Yeah. What is it that God is asking for yeah. me to do today? Because yeah. some of the times, like you know. We're looking for, we're like, oh, Lord, please give me a purpose. But you know that what God is showing you right now is to clean your house. Yeah, do that. <laughs> so do that. And maybe out of that. Is that I'm waiting the for the Lord yeah, thing. Yeah. And we think I'm going to sit here. Yeah. And then when, you, you know, and, and, and that's the, the, the waiting on the Lord is actively getting ready. Mm -hmm. So that then, that's you know, right. so then when he shows up and says, okay, boom. Here mm. is the, the cash. Here is the contact. Here is the network. If you're not showered and you're not ready 
for that contact to then greet you so that he can introduce you to that person. Because you and never know. You never know what doors, what, what doors God is going to open through the things that he's asking you to actively do. Be yeah. To be an activist for today. You're just sleeping in bed every day. Like, no, I'm just waiting for the Lord. One of these days, the Lord God is going to show up. And then, you know, the, nah. It's, it's the, and then, no, it's, it's God lives in the scene now. What yeah. I'm doing now. He's the, God, I, he's the I am. He's, he's always the, he's present. I'm I always right doing now. something yeah. in the now. And I we are it. always waiting for something else to happen. And I think that if we could grasp that and go, okay, God, I don't know. Like, you know, we talk a lot with my husband about there's a lot of things we don't know about our lives. Well, what do you know now? Exactly. Like, like, exactly. What do you, like, yeah, you don't know next week. What do you know for sure yeah. in this very moment? Yeah. Do that. Take Amen. a shower. Amen. And then maybe someone's going to call your phone and say, hey, there's an interview happening in half an hour. Dude, if you're not and showered, you're, not you're never going to get to that interview. Yeah, that's so true. So what do you know now? And be ready for whatever God is going to bring yeah. into your life. Sorry, just we're really passionate about no, that. No, no, that's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> but look, look, I think of all these things, um, there obviously are going to be some hurdles along the way because yes. we never know what's going to happen in life that's in it. general, especially in this yep. world that we live in. Yep. And um, there's uh, and something happened to you guys, yes. you know what I mean? Like could, that, that, that could have actually meant the end of your pursuit in helping others. Yeah. Um, yeah, tell us, you know, like tell us about that. Yeah, so um, in um, 2013, on the 13th of February, we gave birth... Um, uh, what, four months early at 23 weeks and five days to wow. a beautiful baby girl. We named her Zintle Grace. And um, there were a bunch of health reasons of why she was born that prematurely. And I remember the first night we met with the pediatric doctor who was dealing with her and he told us that she wouldn't make it through the night and then or she wouldn't make it through the week. But she went on to live for three months mm. in hospital. Um, through one of the toughest, I think not even, I shouldn't say one of the toughest, it's probably today, it's still the toughest thing that I've ever had to endure as a first time mom and as a first time dad for my husband. Um, but our daughter would live for three months with days that looked like, okay, we're gonna get to the end. And then days we were like, oh, this is the day that it's going to um, be the worst day of our lives. And three months later, um, she'd fully grown, but her lungs hadn't caught up with her and she was still struggling to breathe on her own. And I, 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 cannot, I, I cannot emphasize how tough this was. The doctors sat down with us and um, asked us for permission to take the life support off mm. her and you know and that was really hard because firstly it's like ah you the doctor you turn off the life support how do you want me to live with mm. that decision mm. to say mm. you know what i mean I, i'm you know m most parents are constantly wanting to do everything for their children there's never a point where you want to feel that you've given up um but yeah it, it became very clear we sought god we called our pastors and at the end of that it, it felt like it was the thing as weird as it sounds, that God was expecting of us to do, to, wow. to trust that even in death, there's life. Um, and so we did, we turned off the life support and she, she passed away, I think about nine or 10 hours um, after that. Um, yeah, and we then went into one of the darkest times of our lives, then dealing with grief, um, dealing with a lot of questions and how do you as a Christian deal with grief? And I think, and I share a lot about how, um, we limit specifically people of faith in knowing how to cope with, with, grief, cause, with grief because for me, I felt really angry. And I you must have felt angry. I mean, like after all that, you, you feel that you've given to God and... Um, and I take every box. Dude, I tied. I'm a worship leader at church. I've mm -hmm. dedicated my youth and my adult life being a social activism. activism. I've moved across the world to constantly be magnifying your name. You owed me a baby that lived. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I think the, the, then the, the, the church um, and how we communicate about death and grief in, in saying, oh, you don't question God, you don't ask why. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I think that I spent the first year or so with, with those limitations in, in not knowing how to handle and deal with grief. Because when you can't, when you can't ask God why things are happening in your life, do you know what's, what that means? It means you're not communicating yeah, with God. Yeah. It means you're not having an open, honest conversation. It's like a, it's like a Job moment. Do you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, okay, so, so, so if I don't ask the guy that I am assigning blame to for what I'm going through, yes. where do I go? Naturally, if I can't go home mm -hmm. to my dad, 
do you know what I'm going to do? Pack my bags and leave. Yeah, true that. Because home is no longer the place. Do you know, and, yeah, and I think that we, you know, my biggest thing now is about restoration and how we reframe people who are in pain and, and how they get connected and stay connected with God during their pain and then after that pain, mm. because I think that's where we lose a lot of people. I met a woman, um, I was talking at church and I met a woman who came to me at the end of the service and she gave me a hug and she was bawling her eyes out. And she says, oh, I'm so sorry that you're going through this and life will never get better again. Um, you know, and you're just gonna have to figure out how you deal with it because I lost my child 30 years ago. And, and as she's telling me this, dude, it was like she's reliving the losing her child in that second. Mm -hmm. And she's talking about 30 years ago. Now I remember thinking there must be a different way because, you know, at the time I was 31 and I was thinking I, I cannot, like at 31, yeah, life can't, you I can't refuse. Stop. I mean, you're just like, like yeah. I, I refuse to believe yeah, yeah, that yeah. now this is over. And that's when, for me, I went on this journey of saying, I know that they say I can't ask questions, but I'm going to go and I'm going to keep banging mm -hmm. at God and I'm going to keep saying everything that I want to say until He, you know. And at that point, God wasn't saying anything. And I, I had always had this image of a little girl going to her dad and going, Why? and crying. And the dad is just standing there and constantly trying to put his arms yeah, around the girl. Because he knows and that whatever he probably says, the girl won't hear. But right yeah, now what and she he's wants. not responding. Yeah. yeah, and, yeah, I, yeah. and I remember when I was done huffing and puffing and crying and banging and cursing out and being crazy mm -hmm. that then when I was done it was almost like God was waiting and when I was done he was then able to embrace me and share a lot of things but I still don't know why so yeah. I got a lot of answers and the why is not for me to know because that's what makes him um, a sovereign God over Absolutely. everything and he then works out yeah, yeah. so so now Don, you've written this book Yes. Um, dear God, and yep. I'm assuming that this, uh, these are your memoirs yes. or your questions yes. that you had for God. My Please conversations. Tell us about it. Your conversations. Yes, with God, yeah. my thoughts. I, kept, I keep a journal and in it I've always had a journal from um, when I was young in high school. But as I grew a bit older, they became more about my prayers and my mm -hmm. thoughts and my concerns. Um, the deep stuff that I wouldn't say to Luis or, or my husband, the, the secret things that I want to talk to dad about but I want to be able to reflect back on. So when I was then going through the um, tough time during the pregnancy and when she passes away, yeah. um, I, I wrote everything. I wrote how I was doing, how I was feeling, my frustrations, the, the good days and the bad days. It was only about uh, two and a half years later um, that I felt God saying, I need you to convert your private, intimate thoughts that we've shared together wow. and make them public, which at first was like, mm, you duped me because they're... You they're, use me for other people. Yeah, I'm like, and I'm like, dude, that was private. Like, yeah. how did I tell you my secret? Now yeah. you're saying I need to tell my secret in public. And it was like, well, because everything is not just about you, love, which was a harsh truth yeah. that I had to accept. But yeah, so the book is, is um, snippets. Um, actual snippets from if you go home and see the book you'll see the actual snippets in the journals so did you find that as you were as you share your story that many people are now coming up with their own yeah, story yeah yeah I've, I've found that more than anything we think that death is unique but it's not wow um it, it there's such a common thread in fact grief is not unique. Whether I found people who who say they felt the same way when they lost their job, because that's a, a, a yes. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. grief and the process of how you deal with the reality of grief has been the same. Some people relate more, and they've lost a husband, yeah. um, or some actually have gone through a divorce. But the, that that loss of the hope, the loss of the future, and the loss of the certainty of what they were expecting um, has left them grieving for their marriage. Or yeah, so that that's been really good. And I, my hope with the book is really is that it will help us begin to talk about the darker side of things that that we feel and go through in our lives and allow God to step in and bring light into that space. Well, you know, Nelson Mandela, he once said that when you let your light shine, yeah. you give others permission to do the same. Exactly. And um, I think that's wonderful because also just referring to the, you know, to the Bible, the mm. fact that when... Uh, 
you know, we're only going to overcome by the blood of the Lamb and that's by it. the power of our testimony. That's and it. the fact that because this is now your testimony, sometimes mm. it's not really done yet, mm. but the fact that you've shared it, yeah. it's been able to help other people uh, in the process and exactly. overcome yeah. the works of the devil. Because exactly. I think you losing your child, yeah. it wasn't God, yeah. it was the works of the devil, but yeah. God is able to take that and turn, and it, turn it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and so you've taken this one, st one step further, apart yes. from just writing the book, but yeah. uh, you've got a show that's coming, you know, like that's coming up. Yeah, I do. Um, that's called Deep and Meaningful. Deep and Meaningful. Meaningful. Which is about deep and meaningful conversations. Okay. So it, it comes from again the yeah. the experiences post losing a child, um, feeling like the village that used to exist before that you could run to and ask questions and, and unpack the biggest challenges of life. I feel like as a twenty first century woman, I like I wanna go to Facebook for for answers i don't want to go to some random forum and so what the show aims to do is have deep and meaningful conversations mm -hmm. with women about an array of issues women of faith specifically mm -hmm. about an array of issues like what does womanhood mean to you how do you balance your faith and 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 mm -hmm. you know so it's an an unscripted conversation between myself and a, another um woman and it's about an hour long and we just literally unpack and non-sugarcoat Wow. everything yeah and the idea is again that will spark conversations it will encourage women um to stop having um meaningless conversations yes. with, with other girls but to superficial that's the yeah. word i was looking for that we can start to live our lives above the filter on instagram well you know it's so weird because women are actually way deeper than guys you know if yeah. I'm with my friends, we'll talk about something important for yeah. a minute, yeah. and the rest of the time we'll just talk rubbish. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> Women are able you guys to go need about fast one all over your own. Subject, yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? So I think that really is just such a beautiful show that's yeah. coming up. I don't know if I can say where it's going to be going on to because yes. I, I don't know how far you guys yes. to uh, you know to uh, to completing that deal. Yes, uh, it's obviously like another network, but I want you to know something. Whenever, whenever we, you know, we got you here because we want people to to see you, yeah. to know you, yeah. so that like if they see you anywhere else, whether they buy your book yeah. um which is uh, whether they see your book at a at a store yes. you know or they see you on a, on a channel either being interviewed or in this case doing your own tv interview i want yeah. them to know that you won of us you know <laughs> you're part of the church and that we're praying for you absolutely, we love you absolutely. and uh and and yeah i want to just see god Thank expand you. that social act activism, activism. <laughs> yeah we need more people just on that all the areas wagon. you know yeah um, thank you. i'm gonna ask for something because we're kind of running out of time yes. um maybe just to give us like you know just whatever is in your heart because i know that there are probably women out there who've been through exactly what you what you've gone through yeah. so maybe just in 20 seconds just a word of encouragement to them and you can look at the camera at you the can camera. start practicing now for deep and meaningful <laughs> and <laughs> check the okay. camera out there i th i think the the biggest truth yeah when you're going through your stuff is you feel like it's the end of the world i, I want you to know that it's not like i guarantee you it gets better like everything comes in waves, but, but it gets better. Hold on to that reality that you won't always feel like this. If you look at me and you look at my life and some of the dark days that I've gone through, it always didn't look like this. This is a testimony of the journey and, and, the, and the work that I've done. I, I, I can't tell you enough, it gets better. Hang in there, it gets better. Trust God, he will get you through. He says we're going through the valley of the shadow of death. You're not parking or building a house. You're going through it, my friend. Hang in there and trust God. It may be hard to trust him again, but trust God, it gets better. Wow. Yeah. Well, God has done it. If God has done it with you, he can do it to every special, single one of us. I'm special, but I'm not that special. Dawn <laughs> Faith McKay. So to get in touch with Dawn, email her at info at dawnfaith.com and please do yourself a favor and go to, and go to Dawn Faith dot com at www.dawnfaith.com you'll be absolutely inspired by the work that god is doing in her life and uh, all the wonderful work that she's doing together with her husband uh, but we'd also love to hear from you so please connect with us uh, info at tbninafrica.org and from all of us here at tbn meets tbn in africa good night and god bless you.